Well, we're here with Kevin McCurley at the National Reptile Breeders That's Expo in smile. Daytona Beach. Kevin does have to smile every once in a while here this morning. That's kind of tough. Yeah. Today. How are you today, Kevin? I, I'm just excited. You're just excited? Oh, yeah. You can just tell. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, but... uh. Kevin is uh, the owner and operator of New England Reptile Distributors, a nerd. He's world famous. He's one of the foremost breeders of ball pythons. He's responsible for innumerable morphs. Kevin, what have you got here to show us today? Uh, Alright, let's make sure I got my keys. Uh, what can I show you guys? Uh, here's something new. Which is, this is four mutations. These things are actually, they're in shed, so they're kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to appreciate what they look like. But this is a uh, Pretty different as far as ball pythons go, and there's no spider in there. There's a bunch of other cool stuff in there. It's pretty wild looking. But uh, when they when they shed, in theory, I can tell you what they might look like because I've uh, just hatched these, so I don't necessarily know yep. exactly what they're going to be. But what I'm I'm trying to do is um, hatch these animals with these uh, these flames up the side, yep. all that blushing. Yeah. So kind of after after that kind of thing. So, I'll show you an ingredient, which this snake is multiple, this is actually a four gene too. But you see right here, all these flames? Yep. So those kind of flames, well these are going to have a fair bit more of that kind of thing going on. And uh, that orange will all come out, like this guy right here, as it gets a little bit older, yep. it'll get a lot oranger. Um, did you crossbreed those with gray bands or what? No, not at all. And uh, I'll show you. We're trying to do flames. That's that's pretty orange for a ball python. So this one really doesn't have the orange, but this is different. But we're still working on getting those flames. Yeah. Then you start bringing a couple other genes, and it it causes uh, the orange to come out. This one's real pretty, but it's shedding. Okay. Of course, these animals uh, time most of their sheds right for when you want to show them off. Exactly. As we know. Well, you've got some other things other than ball pythons here, too. You've got oh, yeah. Womas and, and bearded dragons and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I obviously like just basically all reptiles. And I'm just a, definitely a hobbyist going out of control. Let me show you one cool ball python. Okay. And uh, with, with hatching stuff and everybody's, oh, look, he hatched this, oh, he hatched that. Everything's great. Well... This is a, this is a, one of the you know new mutation. That's a um, that's a killer bee pinstripe. So that's a super pastel spider pinstripe possible woma. Wow! But this is the second one I hatched. Like two weeks before I hatched this one, I hatched another one with a herniated umbilicus. Oh. So where its umbilical cord was, yeah. it wasn't all you know small and it was larger. And I didn't think it was too big of a deal. I sent it to my vet. He patched it up and it died. And so, of course, that was a very hard day for me. I was very, very upset. Yep. And here's like a bumblebee pin. Wow. You can see that. And this, this is a super pastel pin, but this guy's shedding. So, these guys get like a real lavender head. Yeah. And then we start getting um, this one's shedding. But that's a bumblebee pin woma. So, we're starting to hit that, you know, the four genes going on in the same animal. Yeah. So, progressively in the next, you know, couple of years, I'll be able to start having that five, six genes in an animal routinely. These are killer bees. So that's a super pastel spider. My phone keeps ringing. One missed call. Let's see, Jeffrey. That's fine. Well, that. talking about hatching and hatching snakes out, you've got some snakes hatching out today here Oh, at the show. yeah, why not? Why don't you Bring show it, People always like to see this. Don't, don't forget a show like this. Yeah. There's a lot of people that really don't know a lot of newbies, so they're just kind of seeing some stuff. Yep. So, basically, I just had a couple snakes hatching. These are um, the Enchi pastel, or actually just the Enchi mutation bred to a pastel. Okay. So, uh, these actually make really, really handsome snakes when they're older. Yep. And we can still see that's the, the remains of the yolk and the umbilicus right there. And, uh, like this guy, he's, he's still working on his, you can see, see his yolk right there? Still working on it. So basically, as he starts breathing, 
As soon as a snake comes out of the air, or actually enters the, the world and starts breathing, they start metabolizing their yolk a lot faster. Yeah. So as soon as you get these guys breathing, they just go right through their yolk. So probably within, you know, by tomorrow morning, there won't be any yolk there. As yeah, long as they're... Dry up and fall. Uh, it will, yeah. The majority of it will actually be sucked into the animal. So you get these little fat guys. Right. Big fat bellies right here. And that will take them right through their, you know, first sheds. And then we, you know, generally offer them food. These guys, if you look at this, come over here. They'll kind of, they'll turn into that. Wow. And they get, yeah, so it's these lower guys right here. So they turn nice. And the Enchi makes, you know, nice bumblebee right there. A lot of cool things you can do with it. Now, how do you come up with all these names? Um, well, I'm the evil morph god. I have to have all sorts of stupid names. Uh, I, I don't know. Actually, I start running out. Okay, here's a Soul Sucker 2.0. And uh, that's, yeah, that's a really inventive name, but uh, it's a pretty cool snake. Uh, I'll pull that out. You have to be kind of uh, humorous about it. You, yeah. can't, you can't take it seriously. So, I don't always tell what every, every one of my mutations are because you want to keep it a little bit interesting. That's pretty neat. We're de definitely getting towards the area where these ball pythons aren't really looking like ball pythons. Yep. They would be unrecognizable as such in the field. That's what yeah. Well, well, we, you want to go a little beyond ball pythons? Go look at something else? Sure. All right, over here. Yeah. All right. All right. I like reticulated pythons a lot. Yeah. So this is basically the reticulated python of, in my opinion, the gecko world. So. I kind of just, I went for the angry geckos. Okay. And these are toke geckos. Right. So this is just a little smattering of some different stuff that I like that I'm playing with. Now you've actually got toke geckos that are handleable, which is supposedly sure. an impossibility. So they're a little upset here. They really are. They're, they, they're just, they're panicked. I would be too. But you actually get a gecko like this. Let's see. She usually, when she comes out, she'll... So walk around your hand and lick you like a leopard gecko does. Yeah. This one's a little bit grumpier. But she's just they're basically just scared. Back at home, yeah. they're good. Wow, those are neat geckos. And you like this guy, he sleeps on his back, he's posing. Because he's trying to be really cute. He wants somebody to buy him because he doesn't want to be trapped in the prison. So he, like he wants somebody to rub his belly. Yes, yes, he has to pose. I can, uh, this is cool. Everybody at the show seems to really like this, Ooh, which is basically, is it's a patternless, uh, we call it a powder blue. Yeah. And it's a patternless toke. So if you take the toke, remove the red dots, you get this basically anthristic looking animal. And uh, they're pretty remarkable. And over here are a bunch of the babies. That's an incredible lizard. Like there's a little baby. This is a caramel. These guys change quite a bit. I was just holding some of the caramel type stuff. And you haven't been bitten once here in the last. No, month, they're, so. they're they're wonderful. If you if you put a bit of attention to them and stuff like that, and work with them, you just um, realize these guys are actually pretty smart. Yeah. So if you actually take a toke and you grab them in the head and you're doing all that, you're never going to establish any trust with this guy. Yeah. This is a captive born baby, so they're a lot easier to tame. Yeah. But some of the, you know, originally wild caught animals, I just go through the free handling. You get two different kind of bites out of toke. So you get that. You grab it or it turns and it gets you. Yeah. That's going to be the bite you're going to scream about. This is the other one, which is just a warning. And it just hits you a little bit. That's just they're just trying to tell you back off. You're you know encroaching on their space or whatever. And you what you just do is you establish trust with these guys. And it's just basically uh, you know teaching them that you're not going to hurt them or anything like that. Um, let me see. They're cool. They're maybe not the you know toke for everybody. They're certainly not a leopard gecko, but uh, yeah, they definitely have uh, my interest. Well, Kevin, I want to thank you for taking time out of your welcome. schedule here. I know you've got customers backing up that want oh, to talk to yeah, them about stuff. Yeah, right. So you Alan Apache's over here to, to, to buy geckos. Thank you for talking with us this morning, Kevin. All right, thanks, sir. Bye. All right, bye bye.